not 35. Trent, one of the things that both teams are trying to do is feed the post straight on. They'd be much better if they'd swing the ball and get a little angle on into Ramos. See if Ricky can explode with the drive. He hasn't shown it yet. It's like he's playing a little gimpy. Terry is off a of walker short with the shot, and Ramos there for the rebound. Morton puts it down, had Walker open, didn't get to him, comes up though and hits his own jump shot. Two field goals at both in the second half. At 27 against Syracuse in the Big East final, Morton can explode. Henderson, Gaze with a hand on it and controls it. Lead now to Morton. Three field goals for John Morton in the second half. Henderson having a hard time getting off a good shot on Morton. Gaze taking Brickey. Snyder cut off. Now he'll punch into Ferry. Ferry coming up. Walker not wanting to foul. Backs off. And Duke gets it as Henderson dug it out. Good rebounding by the guard. Firing Seton Hall's ball. When I sense that Duke has got to, in the next minute or so, get some scoring from somebody. Let's see if Ricky can run. He really can't. You notice that? He cannot run. He had to stop. Yep. And come back. Now, what Seton Hall should do is recognize that and get Gaze with the ball in his hand and beat Ricky one on one. Because Ricky just can't run. Leitner his fourth personal foul. Foul is charged to number 32, Christian Leitner. Abdul Nabi will replace foul. him, Teams and he comes into the game with three. Abdul Nabi replaces Leitner. Mike Krzyzewski can still go to a Buckley and Palmer. He's got size down there, but not experience in a game like this one. Gaze, rookie taking him, and on the punch in, another foul, and this one on Abdel Nabi, his fourth. There was the angle I was talking about hitting the low post. It's been tough feeding a man straight on, but to get that angle, like that 45 degree angle, a guy like Ramos can put a man on his hip. Walker steps inside of Abdel Nabi that time, who did not want to reach in and risk his fifth personal, and it's 12 points for Walker. One of those underrated guys down on the inside who can do a lot of the little things, a lot of the dirty work. Snyder hoists the three. Off into Green's hands, and Snyder is called for the foul. His third. Krzyzewski can't believe it. Snyder is still without a field goal. A lot of pressure on this young man coming back home to play here. He's the native of the Seattle area. He's just Duke, not getting it going Smith offensively. Duke has led it all the way, but things are not going their way. Morton missed, oh. but Gaze was there. Perfect pass. And now Bricky is back down on the court again. Brent, he's not going to be able to make it. It's a big blow for Duke University because they lose a guy who is a potential finisher on the break. And now the scoring has to come from Henderson to help Danny Ferry. Ramos working away on Ferry on the inside. Denied the pass. John Smith will try it from the perimeter. And he is short. Rebound by Seton Hall. Michael Cooper yanked it away. You can sense Seton Hall starting to pick up a lot of confidence in this run right now. They have not had the lead the entire game, but you sense they see that Duke is struggling offensively. And if you're Seton Hall, they should be helping out even more on Danny Ferry now because you know that he's going to try to take it over. Walker. Duke has hit only one of its last six shots. Henderson. Cooper is there. The Hall can tie or take the lead. Batted back. 
Duke's ball. Lead Ferry. 26. But Brent, you notice that their baskets are not coming within their offense. Inside again, put it down. And Seton Hall's baskets are. Personal foul. Clay Buckley into the ball game now for Duke. His father Jay played in the Final Four. And Mike really having to go down this bench. Double lobby with what four? He's got Leitner in trouble with fouls. Buckley is 16, a sophomore out of Wayne, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Hitting the free throw, and it's a one-point lead. We'll take a timeout and come right back. With Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger from the King Dome in Seattle. Seton Hall has pulled to within one. That's the closest we've been since Duke scored the first point on a free throw, and timeout is called by Duke. Brent, the press is really effective by not guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds. A 13-4 run over the last three and a half minutes by Seton Hall. They trail it by a point and applying the pressure. Snyder, who still is looking for his first point in this game, bringing the ball up now for the Blue Devils, who have Ferry, Kubek, Buckley, and Henderson, number three. They apparently have lost Bricky for perhaps the rest of the afternoon after suffering that leg injury in the first half. He tried here in the second half and couldn't go. Seton Hall digging back in. Henderson squeezing the trigger. And now the Hall can take the lead. Green on the bounce pass to Cooper. And it goes over. Fred, you can see that Seton Hall has taken Duke out of their offense completely. The basket counts. Seton Hall leads. Foul against Seton Hall. It's 50 to 49. Well, they've battled back 19 points from being down by 18 at one point. Here's the fast break coming out. Good job by Cooper taking it right to the hoop. Kubek's waiting for him. One of the things Duke could do right here against this particular press is let somebody other than Danny Ferry take the ball out of bounds so that he could be the recipient of the pass by throw throwing over the head of a guy like Green who's much smaller. The first lead by Seton Hall in the game. Ferry can't get it back. Ramos yanks it away, and he is fouled by Buckley. As much as Mike Krzyzewski doesn't want to do it this early, I think he's got to come back with Christian Leitner to get himself another score in the game. Buckley not going to score. Kubek not going to score. Snyder hasn't shown that he can, and Henderson having the cold hand. Great comeback by Seton Hall. And hello to Ramos. Ramos! And he turned it over. Ramos can't believe it because he's normally pretty steady on the inside. Now here's an example. See, Danny Ferry's taking the ball out of bounds. They could throw over him. Bounce pass by Snyder is a beauty, and Henderson finishes. 13 for the game with Leitner watching. Duke leading now 51 to 50. 13 20 in regulation. Punch in. Ferry tries to save it. Throws deep and Ramos off his hand. And they give it up. Quinn Snyder scores off the turnover. Boy, Danny Ferry made the great play by throwing it towards his end of the court. Therefore not giving Seton all a chance to capitalize. Ramos wants it low. Ferry to help out. Stayed with it defensively. Walker's got it back. Cleans up. That's his strength. Marvelous offensive rebounder. Now, Gaze is not getting enough credit for his defense in this game. He's shutting Henderson down pretty well. Gaze without a lot of 
of speed, great position defender. Perry will get this one to fall. That's 28 points for Perry with Mickey Krzyzewski watching the Duke Blue Devils here from the Kingdom this afternoon. Gaze hoists the three from down under. Henderson tried to help out. Gaze too dangerous a shooter to allow to go inside. You turn your back and he'll drill it. Duke 55, Seton Hall 55. Here's Snyder. His three still not there. And there's a push on the inside against Duke. Henderson's second. Another thing I've noticed, the last time or two down the floor, Danny Ferry, very, very tired. He has not come out of this game yet. You can see him going over on the sidelines. He needs a blow. For Duke, Christian Leitner and John Smith return to the lineup. Leitner and Smith both check back in. Avent back for Seton Hall. Cooper is on the floor. France Bolsey, number 30. Also there, great pass to Avent. Back screen, beautifully set by Gage. Seton Hall leading it by two. They punch the ferry and great defense on the inside. Gaze off the spin, gets it to Avent again. It's a four point lead by the Pirates. And here you can see Bolsey, who is very rested, playing Danny Ferry, giving him all kinds of trouble. Leitner. Basket by number 32. Basket two. Inside to Cooper. Sixty-one fifty-seven. Seton Hall leading Duke. Ferries outside. Henderson short. Gaze was there again defensively. Green tries to save it. Stepped out of bounds. But Duke what a ball. Duke brilliant play by Green, though. If he throws the ball back in, he knew that there's a chance Duke could get it right under their own basket. Better off taking it out with him. T.J. Carlissimo's team on a tear. Seton Hall has hit 12 of its last 14 shots, and Snyder got it up high on the glass and couldn't get it to fall. Drawing the foul this time. That's Bolsey's second. Second opportunity he had to put back a relatively easy one. Didn't hit either. Ferry's three. Off to the side. Seton Hall comes back. Duke completely out of their offensive pattern right now. Trying to do it all one-on-one. -on -one. Now they're down by six. We've got a timeout called by the Blue Devils. Ten minutes remaining, and Krzyzewski is down to only one timeout. Carlissimo with two. Fouls to give. Seton Hall with four. Duke only one. In case of a hell ball, it'll go over to the Blue Devils. This half, Duke is shooting 41%, and Seton Hall has elevated its game. 78%. The Pirates are shooting here against the Blue Devils. And the struggle continues. They get it in, or at least try, and Ferry forced out to the perimeter. Nothing working down on the inside. Now they hit Leitner. He goes hard and drew the foul. This is a good move by Mike Krzyzewski. He's got to figure out that second score. It may be Leitner because he hasn't been able to get it on the perimeter. And what also will help by going to Leitner is it keeps that weak side defender from double teaming Danny Ferry. you got to like P.J.'s situation right now because he's being able to rest both Morton and Walker on the sideline. Watching from the sideline, several of the Michigan Wolverines, they'll be out here next against Illinois. Walker returning. He's played a solid game here this afternoon. And sitting down with the three fouls, Volsey. 
nice piece of substitution by T.J. Carl Ismo. All he needs is a couple of minutes out of those subs. He's much more rested with his key people than is Duke. 63-59. Walker takes Duke down in low and then the tap back. And that was Avent again. Number 32, Anthony Avent. Good help by Cooper on Ferry. Davis, Kubek at the perimeter, in low to Leitner, and the freshman starting to pick up the load at 13 points. It's a four-point lead by Seton Hall. Nine and a half minutes to go in regulation. Green continues on in. Leitner was there, and he is fouled out of the game. Oh, that was I thought he had the ball. Off. Yeah, right on top of it. And this really causes problems for Mike Kucheski, because just when he was getting the secondary score, he loses him on foul. Watch this play right here. I thought he had all ball on this one. All ball. And Christian Leitner felt likewise. Smith. Number 33, John off the Duke Now they have four perimeter players and Ferry on the floor. For Seton Hall, Gerald Green shooting two. Green has been the one man that's been the difference as far as getting Seton Hall back into their offense. Even when they were behind, he stayed with it. Well, he was one of the big differences in P.J.'s recruiting, too, in that Riverside Church League, which has about 15 or 16 graduates now playing in the NBA, when he was able to convince this young man to come to Seton Hall. And then he was able to get Morton and Walker to join him. And he had coached down in Puerto Rico. He knew about Ramos. Gaze had lit up the Big East All-Star team. So he was able to recruit him for a year. Now it's Snyder hoisting a three in and out. Walker with the rebound, and Seton Hall is solidly in command of this game. It is 67-61, and you can feel it. Snyder without a field goal. Gaze down under again. Well, he can shoot that three-pointer without his legs being in good position, which is hard to do. really panicked right now. You can see it in their eyes. Snyder again. And this time, he finds the range from three-point land. Five points total. All five in the second half. Keeping Duke within six points. It'll be Gaze again. Oh! Well, they don't have Larry Bird in Australia, but Gaze will do down there, won't he? Remember a name like Oscar, Brent? That's what those guys can do from the outside to get that three-point swing going. Avent fouling Ferry. Avent's first. Gaze has done the job all year long from the outside as a perimeter shooter, but today I think he's done a great job defensively as well. Bricky will try it again. Injured his leg. Early in the game, stayed in, was forced out, finished a half on the bench as Ramos checks back in for Seton Hall. Green is also out, along with Avent. Again, uh, pulling all the right buttons is P.J. Carlismo. He takes Green out of the game at a time when if he can get three minutes out of Pook Pookie Wigington, it allows Green to come back fresh for the stretch run. Four of Pookie Wigginton bringing the ball up now. He was some player in JC League in California. He's had some problems with a knee. He gets it back from Ramos. And Snyder not so used to looking down <laughs> defensively. I think that Ramos can score on John Smith on the inside. Smith trying to stay with it. Ramos and Wigginton are there defensively. Smith waits for help. And they hit Henderson on a flash. And Gaze was there, off into Wigginton's hands. 
73-65. Seton Hall, seven and a half minutes left in regulation. Gaze just doing the job on Henderson. Henderson cannot get off the shot down inside. Even though he's an outstanding leaper, Gaze's timing has been perfect on the defensive end. Snyder is called for the moving foul, his fourth. Now there's a case where you know Wigginton is not going to be a threat to score that far out. Quinn Snyder just has to play him solid. No reason to try to draw the charge out there. Number 22, Greg Kuba replaces Quinn Snyder. A good team for Seton Hall to press right now with Snyder out of the game. Smallest player in Division I basketball is Wigginton. On the floor for the Blue Devils, Ricky, Henderson, Perry, Smith, and Kubek. Cooper gets it back into Wigginson's hands. Gaines was ready, wasn't he? He sure was. He was thinking about it. Illegal screen on Cooper. His third personal foul is charged to number 31, Michael Cooper. His third personal foul, teams six. Seventy-three, sixty-five. Seton Hall leading. Now Henderson has a much smaller man on him. See if he tries to go over Williamson. Smith on the inside is blocked. Out of bounds, Duke Ball. I think Duke would be smart to get Henderson down in low with Wigginton. He can shoot over him. Henderson, 4 of 15 here this afternoon. Uh, not going to have a chance because here comes Green in. P.J. Carlos Moe right on top of that move. Kubek got hit on the arm. No call. Seton Hall's ball. Special set up play now. High double post. You notice Seton Hall is bringing their offense out a little higher. And a foul against Henderson. This is not a delay game, but it brings the defense out higher, and you're going to get some backdoor cuts from Seton Hall right now. returns and Kubek sits down. And Brent, we talked about Duke being to the Final Four seven times. First time they were there was 64. Went up against John Wooden in 64 when Wooden won his first national championship and it followed. They went 63, 64, 66, 78, 86, 88, and 89. They could be the bridesmaid of all time. Good free throw shooting team is Seton Hall. Gaze sits down to a round of applause. Well, the MVP of the West Regional had an outstanding game today and, and give him some accolades for the defensive work he did on Henderson. Seton Hall is now 14 of 16 from that free throw line. You get a situation where the clock is now becoming Duke's opponent, where they've got to be thinking three. Barry. There's a push by Smith, not called. Seton Hall getting another break. I bet Danny Fleury will not be able to post up down low and get those moves because Seton Hall is bringing people from the weak side over to stop that play. We have had a 28-point swing in this game, from 18 down to 10 up by Seton Hall. One of the more impressive comebacks in the history of the Final Four. You look like you're dead in the water. 
Seton Hall pulled themselves together and has made a remarkable run in this game. Well, I think the key was Bricky going down. Duke was with then without a scorer, and the only way they stayed in the game was a sensational first half by Ferry. Good spacing now by Seton Hall, bringing that offense out higher. They're going to get an easy one. There it is. Almost right there. What's happening is Duke trying to overplay, and there's a lot of space underneath the basket. Snyder's three. Two in a row for Quinn Snyder. Kind of firepower they're going to need here. It's 77 68, just inside of five and a half minutes to work with. He's oh, a nice return move. soon as Morton got it inside to Ramos again, and he'll stay with it. Ricky showing a lot of courage playing out here on that one leg, but just nowhere near the quick Ricky we know of. Knocked away. They've stripped it. And again, weak side defense, that offensive maneuver is not going to be there. Ferry jumping out commits the personal, his second. Foul is charged number 35, Danny Ferry, his second personal foul. For Duke, number 22, Greg Kubek, number 30, Colorado. Gaze's father is the John Wood of Australia. He is the gentleman there with the gray hair on the right. His name is Lindsey Gaze. He coaches a team down in Australia, and it's a team without a star. And that's his son. He badly wants this season to end so he can get his son back home down under. This has been a tremendous learning experience for Andrew Gaze. He was talking about it yesterday, given an opportunity to play one year in the United States. And Brent, being 24 years of age, I don't even think Seton Hall will be applying for him to go ahead and get that other year. He still would have the opportunity to apply for another year of eligibility, but it looks like he is going to go back to Australia and continue to play for their national team. You folks down in Australia should know that his nickname is Jax, as in Hungry Jax. For those of you in the U.S., that's the McDonald's of Australia. Here's Ferry gliding in, missing, rebound, Ramos. And Duke battles to save it, but they have stepped out of bounds at the end line. I believe that's Davis who went flying in there. Yes, it is. With this lead, PJ's going to want to start using that clock just a little bit. Does it sound funny to anybody else to say Seton Hall is going to play for a national championship? What a tremendous story this is. And they're now within four minutes and 25 seconds of moving to Monday night. And yep. they did it the old-fashioned way here this afternoon. Nothing but hard work. There wasn't anything easy about what this team has accomplished here today. Morton! This team has had a great basketball tradition in the past with the Wanzers and the Bobby Davies, some of the great guard play of all time. Honey Russell, the great club that they took and won the NIT championship with back in those days, that was considered the equivalent, if not even more than the, than the NCAA. Now, even though they play their home games in the Big East and the Meadowlands, the school is not located in a swamp, folks. <laughs> is located in South Orange, New Jersey. That's a suburb of Newark. It was created in 1856, and it was named after the first American saint, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. And she's got to be very proud of what the Pirates are accomplishing here this afternoon. Ramos, battling for that rebound, and you're not going to get it away from him. They've got 10 seconds to get it up over. They are now very close almost still have they have to get the ball over half court here it's, it's that 35 it should be Duke's ball because it's been 10 seconds they never got it over half court
has been the man long. Danny Ferry back here. Safety, they've got to get it over half court. Green gets it up. Too quick for Kubek. Again, watch where Seton Hall sets up. Everybody above that foul line looking for the spacing down inside. Blocking foul on Snyder, and Snyder is gone. We remember that scene when he fouled out the Georgetown game and pulled everybody over together, and part of his conversation was win one for me, but at this point, Brent, I don't think that's a possibility with just 3.39 to go. the club that Duke has on the floor against the Morton and Green backcourt to be very difficult to press. Number 23, John Morton, shooting. Somewhere, there are a couple of very embarrassed former members of the student senate <laughs> who once called the P.J. Carlissimo's scout. Once called, it was less than two seasons ago. We're talking about midway through last season where P.J. then eventually led them to their first NCAA bid, and of course this year they have them in the final and championship game. 85-68. Seton Hall leading. They were down by 18 in the first half. Smith is fouled. Very disappointed parents there. That's Quinn Snyder's father in the glasses and his mother right next to him. The young man who had a great high school career. He's a tremendous student at Duke. His great point average is about 3.3. Those are numbers I can't identify with. I'm sure some of the audience can. He's Danny Ferry's roommate. They've had excellent careers. Three Final Fours. But not one time are they going to come home with that championship. This will probably be the most disappointing of the failures. You lead it by 18 in the first half, and you've got everything going your way, and suddenly the plug was pulled from Mike Krzyzewski. Well, I really think that Ricky not being available took away one of the big weapons that Mike Krzyzewski would have to use. Just could not get any more scoring. And that's not to make an excuse for Duke because Seton Hall has played a great game, particularly on the defensive end of the floor. Well, for the first eight minutes, they played a horrible game. Shooting, if you Shooting, they yes. couldn't They couldn't bury anything. And then they've turned it around, that great interior defense. And whoever they draw on Monday night, best be ready. Keep it up. Keep it up. Well, it's a team that we all talked about with basically five seniors when you consider Gaze's great international experience. So it's a club that uh, even down 18 knows that they've been there before. They've played against great competition, have not lost a game against the team outside the Big East all this year. Started off the season winning the great Alaskan shootout. Club that's beaten Georgetown three times in the last two years. And you know what Ballast makes them happier than anything in the world? They won't have to play Syracuse on Monday night. <laughs> Syracuse, <laughs> Syracuse is their Achilles heel, folks. They haven't beaten the Orange men in the uh, Big East since 1981. And now the chant begins. Seton Hall. Streaks this team out. I think one of the great ones is this year they beat St. John's over at St. John's the first time since 1913. <laughs> I mean, that's a streak. This team has captured the imagination of the New York metropolitan area the last couple of weeks with their with their great play. Ferry on a spinner. Smith will try to come back, knocked away, and they're on the end line. It was out of bounds, Duke's ball. Again, Danny Ferry trying to use that reverse dribble, only when he beats his man, he runs right into the weak side defense, making the shot very tough. Bolsey fouled. This is what has happened 
down the stretch in terms of field goals allowed by this defense. Why we've been raving about it all day long. Now, here this afternoon against Duke. Only two field goals in the last seven minutes. The other thing that's impressive is that they do it by taking a team out of their offense completely. You notice that Duke, midway through this second half, started to go completely one-on-one. -on -one. It was the only way they could get a shot off. Barry hoists a three, and, and he has scored 32 points in what could be his last college basketball game. That reminded me of the shot that Sean Elliott hit to beat Duke in the Meadowlands this year. Reach-in foul by Davis on Morton. 223. From the Kingdom in Seattle, this is game one of the final four. Seton Hall headed toward Monday night in the national championship where they will take on the winner of that friendly little neighborhood war between Michigan and Illinois coming up next. Is Illinois, friendly? Yeah, Illinois <laughs> has beaten the Wolverines rather handily twice this year, but that may not matter here this afternoon if Glenn Rice continues to scorch the net the way he did coming out of that southeastern region. That'll be the second game of the national final. You know, Brennan, in, in uh, the great accomplishment by Dave Gavin and what he's done in putting together this Big East, Seton Hall becomes the sixth team in that league in the 10-year history to make it to the Final Four. A great balance from top to bottom. Kubek, Perry stays with it, pulls his way around, and this time Smith coming up, and the foul is called on Volsey. That's his fourth. See the great effort by Danny Ferry trying to do everything he can to stay in this game, but I think they've known for a, a good five or six minutes here that this game was going to Seton Hall. Great career. Lead by 18 and now trail by 17. They were hit by a steamroller here this afternoon. Barry, the only player in ACC conference history which has got a storied past with 2,000 points, over 900 rebounds, 450 assists. He's had a great career and put on an All-American performance here today, but they didn't get any help from scoring from anybody else. Somebody wide open gaze, but nobody sees him yet. There he is. A little frosting inside the two-minute mark. They'll bring down the final seconds on the clock, and Seton Hall will head toward Monday night. Barry, though, still battling away as the foul is called on Morton. And the Danny Ferry era at Duke, one of only four players to have his number retired. The third time he's been in the final four in four years. Now, keep in mind that in each of those appearances, his last loss was to the team that won the national championship. They were beaten in that final game as a freshman by Louisville. Then the next year, they were picked off by Indiana, and the Hoosiers won the national championship. A year ago, Mike Krzyzewski lost to Kansas. So what a great omen that might be for Seton Hall. Foul goes against Duke, Kubek. Minute and a half to go. You know, Brent, I, I think back and we talk, I talked about the history of Seton Hall basketball, the great Honey Russell teams. That club that he had was undefeated and number one ranked in the nation until they lost two straight games. Opt to go to the NIT instead of the NCAA. They won the NIT championship. Indiana that year won the NCAA championship. It'd be hard to believe now that a vote would be cast by players to say, let's uh, play in the NIT instead, huh? Avan, who had a great game off the bench again. And that man who just reached over to cheer, P.J. Carlissimo, is having some tournament as a coach. He is pulling all the right wires. And he pulls him himself. 
He's not a board of directors coach. He kneels down in front of that bench and he understands what's happening every minute. Barry gets it back. He's continuing to battle away in a lost cause. Taps one in. That's why he still has a great basketball future ahead of him. And a timeout has been called here by Seton Hall. 1.15 to go. Ramos, the veteran, says, let's talk about how we're going to run this clock out. Seton Hall down by 18 in the first half, moving toward Monday night and the national championship game. Blazing away at 75% in the second half. Hayes was open there, but they want to run down the clock a little bit, so they'll take a few more seconds off of it. Tough to press five seniors. <laughs> All of which can catch the ball very nicely. fellas that when they were freshmen they were the doormats of the Big East League so they know what it's been like to be down Jays is three <laughs> he's been waiting there Brent, for what seemed like half a lifetime Davis steps inside Gaze and was fouled by him with 22 seconds to go to broadcast to Australia live on Monday night. Well, what do you think? They'd rather watch Greg Norman win the Masters, gaze at a three-pointer, or return the uh, America's Cup. Which one do you think they'd watch? I'd rather have somebody come along and win Wimbledon again. Wimbledon? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Well, at least this is a first for them. They're moving in on another sport. They've won Wimbledon before. Henderson's foot. Mike Krzyzewski really throws the ball away. It's been a long afternoon, at least since about that 10-minute mark in that first half. Isn't that great for some of these subs who don't see much playing time to say that they, they got into a final four, that we were out there on the floor like Trevor Crowley. There he is breaking deep, and they hit him on a pass. Oh, would he love to have a field goal, but Duke would not give it to him that easily as Crawford Palmer, the freshman from Arlington, knocked it away. Has a quick coaching over there on the far side. You know, wasn't it nice and refreshing to see P.J. was out here about an hour before the game talking to people? I mean, not uptight at all. He's really got his head on straight. For the championship game with a dramatic comeback. Putting away Duke 95, 78. <laughs> Michigan will talk some of the heroes in a moment. Monday night, Seton Hall can become the first school from the state of New Jersey to win the national championship. The hottest thing to happen to the Garden State since Bruce Springsteen. And yes, Princeton was in the final four before, as was Rutgers, but they did not take home the big prize. And yes, this team was not entirely born in the USA, but Seton Hall, I can tell you, was born to run, and Monday night they'll have their shot to win the national championship. Let's talk about now the Chevy MVPs from this first game in the national semifinal. Daryl Walker for Seton Hall, 19 points and six rebounds. 
and Danny Ferry closes out his college career with 34 points. Let's go back down court side with Brett Musburger. All right, Jim, thank you. And uh, we're down here with P.J. Carlissimo and a gutty band of Seton Hall Pirates. P.J., down 18, any discouragement? How did you start to get it turned back? I didn't do anything, Brett. These guys just started playing. I think Duke just took it to us early and did a great job. And we might have been a little tight, but that's not giving Duke their due. They came after us, and we didn't play as relaxed and as well as we could play. I think once the kids settled in defensively, we were okay. Did you say anything to them as they came to the sideline and you gave them a little blow in the early going and they were tight? No, we, just, we were tight. There was nothing you could say. It wasn't X's and O's. They knew they weren't playing. They just had to settle down and play. Oh, I, I think you're too modest. Oh. Billy, you got some of the heroes. Yeah, everybody wants to hear this Aussie talk a little bit. We've seen him shoot and score. Andrew, we, Brett and I were kidding. What would they like to see down there? Somebody win Wimbledon again? The Sharks win the, the Masters? Or you take it all the way to the Final Four with a championship? I think right now, you know, I'm just so proud. And, I, you know, it's the first time a game's ever been televised back in Australia. And if I've had some part of that, you know, it just makes me really happy. Ramon, this has been some tournament for you. You've played so well all year long. The stats have not been here, but everybody in your team seems to be picking it up. What is it about this ball club that they're pulling together so well? Well, we're like a family. I think uh, the team is so together right now that anybody can come up and do the job. And, and this, this team is like a family. It's unbelievable how well we, go, we, take, we feel against each other. Well, it's good luck for you that these two guys bumped into each other, PJ. <laughs> They're doing a pretty decent job. Gerald, great ball game for you. Yeah, and also by Gerald here, he did some of those little things that got the hall back in. Now they'll go back and have some more interviews and come out and see who's going to win the Illinois-Michigan game. We'll send you up to Jim Nance.